my fellow beings, my name is Amanda, and today we are going to be talking about the similarities and differences between fibromyalgia and myalgic encephalomyelitis or chronic fatigue syndrome. And the reason why I'm doing this video today is because a friend asked me and I went completely blank. I could not think of the answer and I realized that I didn't know the answer. And so I did a bunch of research and here is the video for her. So here we go. The similarities between chronic fatigue syndrome and fibromyalgia, which today I'm going to be using myelagic encephalomyelitis, ME, or CFS, which is chronic fatigue syndrome. I'm going to be treating them both as the same thing, even though there is some debate over whether or not they are exactly the same thing, but that's for a different video. So the similarities between chronic fatigue syndrome, CFS, and fibromyalgia, FMS, is pretty similar. And the thing is, is that they're so similar in some respects that doctors have been arguing for a long time about whether or not FMS is just another variant of CFS. The Centers for Disease Control say that there are 5 million Americans that have fibromyalgia and there is about 1 million people with chronic fatigue syndrome or myelagic encephalomyelitis. One of the big differences between fibromyalgia and myelagic encephalomyelitis is that FMS is more of a muscle condition and it is treated by rheumatologists and arthritis specialists. But ME is thought of more of a viral infection. So it is treated by immunologists rather than rheumatologists. Another big difference is that even though both of them have an extreme fatigue, which is in the name of chronic fatigue syndrome. In fibromyalgia, the fatigue is a little bit behind the muscle pain. So the muscle pain is gonna be the forefront of the illness, whereas the fatigue is also there, but it's a little bit behind the muscle pain. And then when you have ME, the fatigue is more in the front and the muscle pain is in the back. So that's a little bit of the differences between the two. So the things that make chronic fatigue syndrome and myelagic encephalomyelitis different is how they started. It is believed that fibromyalgia is started by some form of trauma, maybe a car accident or an emotional trauma, whereas ME is thought to be believed to be caused by a viral infection like influenza or mononucleosis, chickenpox, thing, viruses like that are believed to start ME. When it comes to fibromyalgia, there are 18 distinct pain points on the body and you have to match at least 11 of those pain points to be diagnosed with, with fibromyalgia. Whereas ME, there aren't those specific pain points that you have to match in order to be diagnosed with ME. The next one is inflammation. People with ME or CFS tend to have more inflammation inside the body. So they suffer with things like swollen glands, fever and chills, swollen joints, things like that, a lot of inflammation with ME CFS. Whereas with fibromyalgia, doctors don't tend to see inflammation with their pain. The things that are similar between them is they both cause extreme fatigue. They both cause muscle pain. They do happen more often in women. Yay, so exciting. And usually both of them start in middle-aged women. I wouldn't consider myself middle-aged. I am still young, but <laughs> generally it tends to happen more often in middle-aged women. The two things that they have found that help both MECFS and FMS is getting a good night's rest easier said than done. So a lot of medications and sleep treatments to help get the sleep that they need. And also cognitive behavioral therapy has also found to be really helpful for both of these conditions. But when it comes to treatment, there is a big difference in the treatment of both MECFS and FMS. In FMS, they have found that aerobic exercise helps substantially with FMS, even though it's really hard to get up to, an, to do aerobic exercises, they have found that it does help. Whereas CFS and ME, 
there is a problem with exercising because people with those conditions can end up in post-exertional malaise or PEM and that can be devastating to them and can cause their symptoms to go through the roof and then they go into a crash. So there is a difference between exercise as treatment for these two conditions. One of the big things that I do want to bring up is that there is a difference between fibromyalgia and ME-CFS in the fact that fibromyalgia is a syndrome and ME-CFS is classified as a disease. Does that make fibromyalgia non-existent? No, because if you think about it, AIDS has the word syndrome in it. Acquired immunodeficiency syndrome, and no one says that that's not a real illness. Obviously it's a real illness, it's a devastating illness. So if anyone comes at you and says, well, it's just a syndrome, so it's not real, no. Because ME-CFS was once considered just a syndrome as well. All the name syndrome means is that they know more about it if it's a disease versus a syndrome. So they know less about fibromyalgia than they do ME-CFS. Not that there's a huge knowledge about it, but they know a little bit more and it went in front of a medical board to be deemed a disease. Whereas fibromyalgia has not had that um, medical board go over it and decide that it is considered a disease. But I'm pretty sure that in the future, it will be considered a disease as well because it's horrendous. But if you think about it, other illnesses that have syndrome in it that we know are diseases are things like myofascial pain syndrome, restless leg syndrome, and irritable bowel syndrome. We know that these are real illnesses and we know that they mess up the body and cause a lot of pain in the body but they're not considered diseases yet because there's not a lot known about them. So even though ME-CFS is considered a disease and fibromyalgia is considered a syndrome, does not mean that either is more important. It doesn't mean that either is less real. It doesn't mean that any, it's just a name. And as you notice that um, chronic fatigue syndrome still has the name syndrome in it and that's because patients and doctors refuse to accept a different name. One of the names that they wanted to call it is systemic exertion intolerance disease or SEED but doctors and patients alike for some reason don't like that name. I'm like let's go for it. It makes it sound better I guess but it hasn't been accepted so it's still CFS, chronic fatigue syndrome. And that's also one of the reasons why I like using the word myologic encephalomyelitis more than chronic fatigue syndrome because it makes it sound more medical. It makes it sound real, I guess, is the best thing I can say for that. But there is a little bit of a debate going on whether or not CFS and ME are the same thing or not because they may be different but that's a different video. One thing I want you to remember is that with both of these illnesses, there are treatments available, even though there is no cure, but find the one that is right for you. There's a lot of different treatments out there and each person is different and they are individuals. So find the treatment that is right for you and stick with it. If you have either conditions, fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue syndrome, myologic encephalomyelitis, my heart goes out to you and I do not wish this upon anyone because both conditions are horrendous and they are real. So don't believe anything that someone tells you that either condition is not a real illness because they both are real and you are not crazy. You are perfectly in the right to believe that your illness is a legitimate illness because it is. I hope that you learned something from this video. I hope you took something from it and maybe you learned about the differences and similarities between ME-CFS and FMS. If you enjoyed this video or you learned something new, go ahead and click that subscribe button and go ahead and click that like button if you did enjoy this video. Remember to be kind. Kindness is free, so give it out to everyone and I'll see you next time. Bye.
my fellow beings. My name is Amanda and today we are going to be talking about the difference between fibromyalgia and chronic encephalomyelitis. What? What is chronic encephalomyelitis? I don't even know what that is. Oh, I didn't even hook things up. Hold up. Intermittently or the word that's supposed to go The centers of dissenter centers. Blah, 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 blah. It's really hot in this room, and I really can't regulate my temperature, so I'm like dying right now. Non steroidal. Blah, 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 blah. You'd think I'd know this word, considering that I take them a lot. Um, that's not what I was going to say, but that was for a different part, so take that and put that in. Um, they wanted to call it systemic immunodeficiency. No, not immunodeficiency. Holy moly, no. I am sweating up a storm. 